The intent of this video is to evaluate the combat effectiveness of the German ME-262 jet fighter had when engaging U.S. heavy bombers. As the war progressed, the ability of German conventional piston engine fighters to engage U.S. heavy bombers decreased dramatically. This was due to availability of long-range fighter escorts, revised formation tactics, and increased usage of blind bombing. This 1945 declassified 8th Army Air Force Tactics and Techniques document outlines the progression of U.S. bombers' combat radii based on the type of fighter and model, bomb load, and fuel quantity carried. This chart graphically outlines the combat radii of each of the fighter types based on the month and year of availability. Note that long-range fighter escorts had the capability to reach Berlin in March-April 1944. From early 1944, U.S. fighters were now able to fly formation coverage, providing protection to the bomber streams. This 1945 declassified 8th Army Air Force tactical development chart outlines a typical fighter escort. The bombers are flying in a 36-plane combat box as highlighted here. The combat boxes are trailing each other 4 miles apart. The escort fighters will be flying cover, weaving 1,000, 1,500, and 3,000 feet above the bomber formations. This image shows the fighter escorts and their contrails above the bombers. Bomber Command also changed the formations from the unwieldy 54 aircraft combat wing to the smaller, better protected 36 aircraft combat box. Formation flying gives the bombers mutual protective fire coverage as shown in this chart. From September 1943 and on, bombers incorporated the technology to sight bombing targets by radar when heavy cloud cover prevented visual target sighting. The lead bomber in the formation would replace their ball turrets with radar. These bombers were called pathfinders and the bombing method was called blind bombing. German fighters were less likely to attack the bombers during these missions as discussed in this declassified March 1946 226-page combined bomber offensive report. The report states damage to bombers by enemy fighters occurred three to four times as often on visual as on blind bombing raids. Most of the bombs dropped by the 8th Army Air Force's bombers in World War II were sighted by radar methods as shown in this chart. For additional information on blind bombing, see the channel's seven-part YouTube bombing series suite of videos. The consequence of the availability of long-range fighter escorts, revised bomber tactics, and blind bombing was a dramatically diminished number of German bomber interceptor combat engagements. The effectiveness of German bomber interceptors to engage heavy bombers is reflected in this declassified 1945 8th Army Air Force tactical deployment report chart. The x-axis of the chart is a month and year. The line in the body of the chart represents the percentage of attacking enemy aircraft whose bullets or cannon projectiles struck the bomber. This is a measure of the effectiveness of German aircraft in intercepting the bomber formations. The enemy aircraft intercepting effectiveness decreased by orders of magnitude over the period shown. Blind bombing was introduced in September 1943. Long-range fighter escorts and the revised bomber formation started in January 1944. During the months of May through August 1943, 18.2% of attacking bombers were hit by enemy aircraft. In the following year, only 0.4% of attacking bombers were hit by enemy aircraft. This represents a 45 times reduction in the effectiveness of German bomber interceptors in engaging the bomber formations. If the German bomber interceptors cannot reach the bombers, they cannot engage and shoot them down. This chart is based on returning bombers' damage, so there's some survivor bias to consider an interpretation of the data. New types of German bomber interceptors were needed, which could break through the fighter escorts and engage the bombers. The ME-262 had its first combat engagement in July 1944 and remained active throughout the remainder of the war. It performed various roles during the war. The ME-262s could be adapted as a tactical bomber, day fighter, night fighter, reconnaissance aircraft, or used as a bomber interceptor. The ME-262 is best suited as a bomber interceptor given its speed and heavy defensive armament. The ME-262 was about 100 miles per hour faster than the fastest U.S. fighter. The ME-262 was armed with four MK-108 30mm autocannons. Only about four rounds of the 30mm autocannon projectiles were needed to bring down a heavy bomber. 
The main drawback to the MK-108 30mm autocannons were its slow projectile velocity, slow rate of fire, and limited ammo capacity. The slow projectile speed necessitated that the ME-262 jet open fire at closer ranges at around 500 yards. See the channel's video on the MK-108 autocannons for additional information. In March 1945, some of the ME-262 models were equipped with air-to-air -air rockets. The ME-262s carried 24 R-4M unguided rockets attached to underwing racks. The air-to-air -air rockets were 37 inches in length and weighed 7.7 .7 pounds. The rocket's maximum speed was 1,804 feet per second, and they each carried a 1.1 pound explosive charge. The rocket's combat range equated to 1,968 feet or 656 yards as shown in this German air-to-air -air munitions chart. In combat, ME-262 pilots were instructed to ignore the bomber's fighter escort and focus on attacking the bomber formations with high-speed passes. So how effective were the ME-262s in its bomber interceptor role? The focus of the data of this video will be from the 8th Army Air Forces operating out of Great Britain. The 8th operated both B-17s and B-24 heavy bombers. This chart shows a footprint of the Reich occupied territories as of January 1945. Note that some of the data shown will combine both jet and rocket-powered bomber interceptors. The only German operational rocket-powered bomber interceptor was the ME-163. This 1945 declassified 8th Army Air Force Tactical Development Report indicated that the ME-163 had only enough fuel for about 10 to 12 minutes of full-powered flight, lacked maneuverability while under full power, and possessed limited range. The report summarized that the ME-163 rocket powered bomber interceptor was an outstanding failure. This 1945 declassified 8th Army Air Force statistical summary chart outlines the air-to-air -air engagement outcomes between bombers and German jet and rocket-powered enemy aircraft. The first column is a month and year. The second column is a number of encounters. The third column is a number of combat engagements. The fourth column is a number of bombers lost due to these combat engagements. Couple other observations in the data. Of the 392 combat engagements between ME 262s, ME 163s, and bombers, only 52 8th Army Air Force bombers were destroyed. 92% of the bombers were destroyed during the last two months of the European War. The bomber gunner claims to have destroyed 59 ME 262s and ME 163s during combat. Bomber gunners were known to have overclaimed by a factor around three. The actual bomber gunner credits is closer to about 20 or so. Of the 59 bomber gunner claim kills, 57 were ME 162s and two were ME 163s as defined in this chart from the same source. The tabular data from these charts and the overall 8th Army Air Force bomber losses are represented in this single plot. The x-axis is a month and year. The y-axis is the number of bombers destroyed per month. The area plots are the number of bombers destroyed by either other, flak, piston propeller bomber interceptors, or jet and rocket powered bomber interceptors. Jet and rocket powered bomber interceptors were credited with destroying only 52 of the 5,548 8th Army Air Force's bombers, or less than 0.1% of the total. This U.S. Army Medical Research and Development Command report outlines the impact of innovative various battle weapon systems. In this page snippet from the document, U.S. Bomber Command realized the threat of ME-262 jets to U.S. bombers. However, General Arnold indicated that German jet bomber interceptors can be countered with superior number of fighter escorts. This chart from the same report indicates that the new German jets did not yield expected or optimum results, nor were inherently effective. The report indicates that out of the combat systems reviewed, only the tank, flamethrower, and jet aircraft did not achieve expected battlefield results. The report went on to summarize that bomber crews regarded the ME-262 with a mixture of amazement and fear, while fighter pilots viewed the ME-262 as a challenge. This declassified 
8th Army U.S. Air Force Operations Report chart indicates that German jet and rocket-powered aircraft were credited with destroying only 10 8th Army Air Force fighters. On the other hand, U.S. fighters were credited with destroying 146 jet and rocket-powered enemy aircraft during air-to-air -air combat and another 121 on the ground. This chart from the same source shows a distribution of German jet and rocket-powered aircraft that U.S. fighters claimed to destroy. ME-262s comprised 130 of the 146 German jet and rocket-powered aircraft claimed to be destroyed by U.S. fighters. Fighter credits are known to be more reliable than bomber claims. This unclassified 8th Army U.S. Fighter Command chart laments the overclaiming by bomber gunners, but argues that fighter claims are only overclaimed by about 10%. The rationale includes checked gun camera footage available to fighters, but not available to bomber gunners. This page from the 1945 declassified 8th Army Air Force Tactical Development Report indicates that ME-262s were no match to U.S. fighters in air-to-air -air combat. In summary, the ME-262 and ME-163s were credited with destroying 52 heavy bombers and 10 fighters, or 62 aircraft of the 8th Army U.S. Air Forces, while bomber gunners destroyed around 20 ME-262s Fighters claim to have destroyed 117 in air-to-air -air combat for a total of 137 aircraft. These claims take into account a 66% decrement for bomber gunners and a 10% decrement for fighter claims. Weighing the loss of a small fraction of bombers destroyed, plus the 10 U.S. fighters destroyed against the larger ME-262 losses in air-to-air -air engagements with fighters and bomber gunners, the ME-262 does not have seemed to have lived up to its expectations as an effective combat platform. If you've enjoyed this video and would like to see more, please consider liking, commenting, or subscribing to the channel, World War II U.S. Bombers.